Well, you know, the, the, the genesis of a lot of the explanation of what happens come from, comes from a witness that the LAPD tried to discredit, but they couldn't. And so instead of trying to bring this witness out and show this witness uh, that shared a jail cell with Rafael Perez at the time, uh, and his name is Ken Boagney, or actually Ken Bogany is how it's pronounced. Everybody calls it Boagney, but it's actually Bogany, B-O-A-G-N-I, Ken Bogany. Um, Ken shared a cell with him. Now, a lot of what Rafael Perez told him while they were in the jail cell, sharing the jail cell together, wasn't just about, you know, Biggie. He talked about a lot of stuff. And the LAPD used his testimony to clear five police officers. LAPD has what are called border rights hearings because cops are union. They have an opportunity to kind of have a trial if they get brought up on charges like they did something wrong or they stole or they shot somebody and they shouldn't have. The LAPD has their own little court system. It's called a border rights hearing. And so that police officer gets put up basically on trial by the border rights and then they bring witnesses that can say whether or not this guy's guilty or innocent of what he did. Five cops had charges brought against them for doing wrongful things, doing bad things. And in five different cases, the information that Kenny Bogany told the Board of Rights cleared every one of those five officers. So clearly the LAPD believed that Ken Bogany's testimony was credible. There's no question about it. Why would you call somebody back five times to get your guys off the hook? Okay, you got that same guy. Now, but suddenly when this same guy who's got all this other information you believed comes and starts telling you about all this other thing about Biggie, the LAPD turn around and say, oh, he's just a jailhouse guy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's nuts. Well, the problem is he's not because you just used him to clear five of your own guys. So how could you turn around and say he's nuts now? You can't doesn't work like that. So what the LAPD did instead of instead of instead of acknowledging this guy's existence and saying that, okay, yeah, all right, you know, yeah, we did. So this guy's credible because that would basically mean what he was telling was the truth. What they did was they hid this guy. They took all of the interviews that they had done with him, they took all the information about him, even his name, and they hid it. And the judge found out about it in the Wallace civil trial that they tried to hide any testimony from Ken Bogany about anything having to do with Rafael Perez. The LAPD put it in the desk drawer of Stephen Katz, who was one of their detectives there, and they hid it. They didn't produce it for the Wallace family. They told the Wallace family, no, there's nothing about that. This guy's just a nut job. You know, there's nothing there. Well, they found out, the Wallace family found out that they were hiding it. The judge gave an order and the first time in history the LAPD's robbery homicide division was shut down for the day while they went in and started looking through desk drawers trying to find out that information. You know what they found? They found Kenny Bogany's testimony, and it wasn't good for wow. the LAPD. And what made it worse for the LAPD was when that judge found out that, sure enough, they had found that information. The judge fined the city of Los Angeles $1 million for hiding that stuff. So you got to know right it's there, worth a million dollars, huh? Yeah. No, I was going to say, with all this happening, I mean, you would think that they would just turn the spotlight right down on them uh, and, and do a massive investigation, kind of like, a, I don't know if you're familiar with Betty Lauren Maltese out of Cicero. You know, her husband was yep. a, a mob figure in Chicago in the 50s. Uh, when mm -hmm. she became town president of Cicero, they had to have the feds come in and fire the entire police force. That's right. I You're mean, right. with all this right damn example. evidence, yep. and yep. these guys are just still pushing it under the rug. It's crazy. Well, you got to realize. I mean, if you're willing to, if you're willing to risk a million dollars for something, it's got to be important. Yeah. And of course, that's what when we got on the phone with with Kenny, we called him up, and we, you know, we just asked the question: What is it that you had to say? that was, you know, worth a million dollars to these guys. Why were they fighting so hard to keep what you had to say out of the, you know, away from the Wallace family? Well, you know, yeah. like Jerry Heller said, follow the money. You know, I just yeah. learned that the city of Los Angeles is trying to borrow $170 million right now as we speak to pay for claims, people that have won claims against the city in lawsuits or settlements or whatever, 
and the city of Los Angeles ain't got the money to pay it. So they're going to have to go borrow $170 million just to pay this year's settlement claims. Forget about next year. So you think about how much no. money Biggie Wallace would have made in his lifetime, okay? Uh, half, no. a, half, a, half a billion dollars, $500 million maybe, if he had kept going the way he was going with that trajectory. So when you think about that and then you triple the damages in, because it's a you know wrongful death claim, you triple the damages there, you're talking about a $1.5 to $2 billion judgment against the city of Los Angeles. They they can't pay that. They can't even pay $130 million right now. So what what yeah, options exactly. do you have? I mean, what, we, we, in fact, serious, I mean, you look at the judge that they had at the time, and, of course, she died later. That's why the case got thrown out, because that judge that was so hard on the LAPD, she died. And they got a new judge, and the new judge was the complete opposite. It was just pro-LAPD and basically kind of shut them down. But the the big thing about it, this judge... She didn't think anything of finding him a million dollars just for pissing her off. Can you imagine what that verdict would have come back like? 